Hello again, I'm Don Mitchell. Welcome back to Business Basics, the book that helps you see how, as a leader, you can help your organization, whether for-profit or non-profit, to expand its uh, effectiveness for everyone by at least 8,000 times. Pretty exciting, isn't it? So today we'll be continuing to talk about ways to cut costs, in this case from Lesson 27, uh, which is entitled how to get a better start in making chain reaction 2,000% solutions. Particularly, these are ones for, for cost reductions. As always, I'd love to begin uh, by quoting from the Bible, in this case from the book of Genesis, chapter 24, verses 17 to 23 in the New King James Version. And I quote, And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. So she said, Drink, my lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So it was when the camels had finished drinking that the man took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrists weighing ten shekels of gold and said, Whose daughter are you? This uh, verse uh, uh, is describing, of course, uh, the way that uh, Isaac's uh, future wife uh, was discovered. And uh, in this lesson, we'll be turning our, our attention to getting a faster start in designing and implementing chain reaction 2,000% solutions. In my original explanation of the concept in Lesson 24, I described how people have demonstrated uncontrolled atomic chain reactions by filling a large room with set mouse traps carrying two table tennis balls each. Then by dropping a single table tennis ball, all the traps would be sprung in a few seconds, filling the ball in through the air. As you can imagine, the drawback of such a demonstration was setting all those mouse traps and putting tennis table balls on them without starting an inadvertent explosion of balls. Such mistakes occurred from time to time, and the challenge for printing the demonstration was great. A lot of time and effort were also required to gain just a brief view. The setup time was tens of thousands of times longer than the actual demonstration. If you were to take the same approach in your business, you might have to spend billions of dollars over decades to get to the point where the chain reaction creation of a major business would occur. Such a result hardly seems worth the effort. As wonderful as a chain reaction 2,000% cost reduction solution is, I'm sure you agree that it would be enormously more valuable if the solution could be developed quickly and inexpensively. Although this point should be obvious, I've noticed that some people have been slow to focus on accelerating the development and implementation of breakthrough gains. Part of the problem seems to be that entrepreneurs tend to be overly optimistic. Another challenge is that many entrepreneurs have no idea of what's involved in making the improvements that they envision. Without a lot of knowledge about what to do, it's easy to seek the right help from the wrong people and the wrong help from the right people. Goals are a good starting point for overcoming such problems. Be sure you have a goal requiring that your chain reaction solution can be identified and implemented in a short time frame and with modest amounts of resources compared to what you have available and can afford to commit. Here are some strategies that can help you accomplish your goals for getting breakthroughs faster and less expensively. First, seeing how a highly publicized global contest conducted on the internet might provide you with access to better ideas at little cost. Second, examine cost reductions and benefit gains that can be easily and quickly tested on a small scale. Third, consider the difficulty and expense of applying the methods that provide the cost reductions and benefit gains. Fourth, think about how challenging it will be to attract talented people to help you implement. Uh, fifth, evaluate the natural interest your breakthroughs will attract and how such interest can speed progress. Here's an example of what I mean. Let's return to the idea of helping all my stakeholders learn how to create and to teach others how to define and to implement 2,000% solutions. I could easily sponsor a global contest for such a purpose by spreading information through my blogs, websites, book reviewer sites, profiles, press releases, and email lists. 
I could also uh, offer a prize of receiving personal tutoring from me and accomplishing the winner's choice of a 2,000% solution goal. The out-of-pocket cost for such a contest would be less than $500. The contest could be completed within 60 days of starting. While the contest was going on, I could review my experiences in helping others learn how to create 2,000% solutions and conduct small-scale experiments with teaching in new ways to identify far more effective lower-cost methods. Any experimental results that seemed promising could go immediately into broader-scale tests. When the online contest results were available, I could screen the possible solutions to see which ones might be easily and quickly tested on a small scale and focus next on trying such potential solutions. After all the small scale tests were completed, I should next screen for the difficulty in applying the methods that worked well. Obviously, I should place a lower priority on the methods that require much of my time and attention. I'll emphasize the approaches involving efforts that others could do better than I could at little cost, such as by creating interactive software-based versions of materials I've prepared in the past by using existing software templates. The difficulty of attracting the right people uh, varies with the learning method. Ways of learning that don't need much review or supervision would be emphasized. To check the natural interest, I could use a survey, test various ads through Google as AdWords, or time my test to create solutions for topics that have high Google search rankings. None of such methods would be expensive or slow. I could then test actual demand by making offers that would result in inquiries and measure the responses to determine which offers were most appealing. To reduce the risk of not making fast enough progress, I should implement at least three different initiatives that would not have to compete with one another for resources or attention. Naturally, if you're thinking of doing something that's for a manufacturing, a retail, or a capital intensive business, you'll be able to move as quickly or as cheaply or as smoothly, unless perhaps you consider how outsourcing might give you whatever speed and flexibility you desire. Many outsourcing organizations now specialize in providing all aspects of design and implementation for breakthrough solutions. You just have to define for them what you want to achieve. It can be expensive to work in this way, but the cost may well be lower than those for your own efforts. Even if you're engaged in manufacturing, retail, or capital-intensive businesses and operations, you can still do lots of cheap, quick testing by simulating benefits and observing stakeholder reactions. Then you can rely on outsourcers to speed implementation of the most appealing choices. Now that you understand about using goals and uh, strategies to ensure that you gain a faster start with Chain Reaction 2000% solutions for reducing costs of all stakeholders by 96%, let's shift our focus to making uh, stakeholders irresistibly attracted to areas where you need help in getting a faster start. Why is such a focus valuable? Irresistible attraction brings more resources faster and at a lower cost to improve your Chain Reaction 2000% cost reduction solutions. Here's an example. From its inception, Amazon.com quickly developed its online selling of new books. However, the distribution channel had a big drawback for customers. You couldn't browse a book to check it out before purchasing the way you could do at a bookstore. What could Amazon.com do instead? The company first encouraged publishers to share information online about the book, such as reviews in important publications. Such reviews, however, often didn't come out until months after a book had been published. With newspaper and magazine profits being squeezed, the space in those publications dedicated to book reviews was rapidly disappearing. Seeking a credible alternative to such reviews, Amazon.com hired people to look at books and to write very brief reviews. A productive reviewer could look at and write brief comments concerning 30 new books a day, but that was still expensive. Even at a cost of $15 an hour for reviewers, the process cost over $3.75 a review. The worst problem, however, was that Amazon.com could not find enough fast book reviewers to help keep up with the deluge of new books. From its earliest days, Amazon.com had been interested in letting its customers write about books in the form of customer comments. After just a few months of printing such comments on its website, some avid book readers were touring, uh, touting excuse me, the praises of this benefit to all who would listen. 
customer comments are often very candid, sometimes brutally frank and funny. This process became like an online reality game concerning famous and not so famous authors in which everyone could play. Amazon.com grew exponentially faster than anyone could have imagined due to the dual appeal of more easily being able to find and order books not usually carried in local bookstores and the appeal of customer comments. Since many of Amazon.com's costs were relatively fixed, such as for site design and maintenance, research and development, list updating, warehouses, and corporate overhead, adding more customers caused the average cost for such activities to plummet. Within four years, such costs were less than 4% of what they had been on a per order basis. Then Amazon.com had a major insight. Why not make it more appealing to write customer comments? The company's solution in 2000 was to introduce a customer commentary ranking based on the helpful and non-helpful votes various comment writers received from other customers. Although at first there were no tangible rewards for rankings, thousands of people who were already writing such comments scrambled to write a lot more of them. As an example, a woman who eventually became the number one Amazon reviewer in the United States went from writing one review a day to publishing as many as 50. The number of customer reviewers soon shot up from tens of thousands to millions. As the number and diversity of such customer comments increased, sales of books on Amazon.com also zoomed. This had growth in turn further reduced fixed costs on a percentage of sales. As costs dropped, the prices that Amazon.com charged for books also declined. Before long, the site added the opportunity for others, including customers, to sell their new and used books. Prices from such sellers were even lower. By making a profit on such seller transactions, Amazon.com could then charge even less for the books it directly sold. Notice that the fascination with finding out what others thought drove the cost reductions. By now, putting up those customer comments is probably a source of profits rather than a net cost. Amazon.com makes profit because it sells advertising on its offering pages, and those who post such comments also buy more products at the website. Who knew that result would be possible? The greatest thing that any business founder can learn is how to lead millions of people into taking actions that they enjoy. After the source of public fascination is found, deliver more and more irresistible reasons to indulge that fascination. When you do so in ways to reduce your and your stakeholders' costs, you have potential for a chain reaction cost reduction 2,000% solution. Shortly after starting my consulting firm, I had the experience. I coined a phrase that became widely known, uh, which was, quote, value maximizing strategy, end quote. Mitchell Company was the only organization doing any work at the time in this discipline. Newspapers and magazines were soon writing articles about the subject. CEOs' speeches and annual company reports from companies headlined the concept. I got to the point where I couldn't tell people I met in social situations what I did because they'd want to talk about my work for hours. As a result uh, of the increased interest, uh, the marketing uh, programs were uh, highly attractive. Our cost to acquire customers dropped dramatically. Our ability to charge more for our services increased. Marketing costs as a percentage of sales dropped by more than 96%. However, we did not become a giant consulting firm. We would have had to add a lot more kinds of services uh, before that would have been possible. But the foundation for that opportunity arose because of the enormous fascination business leaders felt for max value maximizing strategy and the great pleasure they enjoyed from expanding stock price. If you have located activities that fascinate millions, you're at a good starting point. If you haven't located such areas, you can start searching for them. Begin by looking at what fascinates people you want to influence about other industries, companies, and activities, and think about how such attributes might be added to what you do. After that, consider how your costs and those of other stakeholders could be driven to near zero or even turned into profit centers by triggering and harnessing irresistible fascination. Even when dealing with an irresistible attraction, many people may hang back from acting. I was reminded of this connect recently when I asked my small business students if they had tasted grape upon mustard, the leading premium mustard brand in the United States. Half the class said it never done so. Well, that was quite an important bit of information. Why? Experience has taught that other, that most people who try grape upon mustard like the product so much that they never want to use any other mustard, despite the product being quite costly compared to its most popular competitors. 
among uh, acting on this huge taste preference, grape upon managers have done a great deal to encourage people to try their mustard. A key early breakthrough was selling individual servings of the spicy concoction to airlines for use with deli sandwiches. Many other excellent sampling programs followed. Despite following this strategy for over 35 years, half of my class of future entrepreneurs, classic prospects for this upmarket product, hadn't tried Great Poupon. Clearly, even more trial-oriented marketing had been needed than had been done. Despite the brand's amazing success, one key ingredient, creating a chain reaction 2000 solution, was missing. Stakeholders weren't given an early incentive to jump on Great Poupon's bandwagon. More than a billion dollars in profits were probably missed because of insufficient trial. I'm sure you'll agree that's a pretty big mistake of omission. Grape Upon's biggest costs are for marketing, distribution, and packaging. By developing the market faster and gaining a higher market share, such costs uh, would have been less than half what they are today in terms of a physical unit of mustard served. As a result, the price could have been a lot lower while the company enjoyed still higher profits per bite. What are some of the things a group of fund managers could have done that they didn't? First, create more visibility at lower cost by using advertising. Celebrities could have been put under contract uh, to order and eat the mustard at high-profile social events, as an example. At sandwich shops, customers could have been provided with free samples to try on their cold cuts. Comparison taste tests with leading mustards could have been conducted in supermarkets and the results publicized. Caterers who wanted to use Grape Poupon should have been provided with large discounts for bulk purchases of branded packets and tabletop bottles. A fan club should have been founded to sponsor fun activities for using Grape Poupon in innovative ways, such as through unusual cooking contests. An early advertising program should have been built around the theme of, do you know what you're missing, to encourage people to taste the product. Restaurants should have been provided with advertising allowances for adding notes to menus about dishes that contain grape upon. I'm sure you have your own ideas about what else could have been beneficially added. I was involved in the brand's early activities, and I will remember well that few people believed in the product's potential as much as three of us did. As a result, minimal efforts were made to increase a band to create a bandwagon effect. A lesson for me is that I could probably have purchased the brand for less than $500,000 and building into a world-class brand worth over $2 billion. If you see an opportunity to create a bandwagon effect with someone else's offering, think about how you can acquire the offering or company so that you can pursue this advantage strategy as an owner acting on behalf of all stakeholders. What's the key learning from this lesson? You can use goals, common fascinations, and incentives to gain a faster start creating and implementing chain reaction 2,000% cost reduction solutions that will almost instantly expand your profits by 20 times after implementation while reducing costs by more than 96% or increasing social benefits by more than 20 times for stakeholders where they believe you will gain the most profits and increase cash flow. So what are your assignments? First, what methods are for getting a faster start with creating and implementing two chain reaction 2,000% cost reduction solutions are you not yet using? Second, what sources of mass fascination are not using to help you gain a faster start with creating and implementing chain reaction 2,000% cost reduction uh, solutions. Three, what bandwagon effects could be uh, established by nurturing sources of mass fascination for creating and implementing chain reaction 2,000% cost reduction solutions in ways that you are not using now. Fourth, which incentives for creating a bandwagon effects are inexpensive are hard for competitors to duplicate or neutralize and supply lasting cost advantages. Fifth, which of such methods are inexpensive or likely to provide inaccurate information and have low visibility so that competitors won't get wind of your ideas in advance? Sixth, which of these methods can be applied at the same time without straining your resources? Seventh, what strategic opportunities for creating chain reaction 2,000% cost reduction solutions should you focus on to make a faster start? So I hope that you are as excited as I am about the potential here to revolutionize really helping your customers and or your beneficiaries and society in total uh, by using this method. Uh, but we have more excitement to come in future lessons. I hope you'll be back soon uh, to learn from them as well. But in the meantime, may God bless you, your family, and all you do in the name of Jesus. Goodbye for now.